What is good, YouTube? YD here, back with a new video for the podcast. Now, a lot of stuff been going on, man. I'm just like, I just had to hurry up and get on here and say, man. First thing I want to talk about, Mr. 21 Savage. This dude was born in the UK. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my mind around that, you know what I'm saying? I mean... He's still who he is, but you know, this dude didn't even talk about none of this. He didn't talk about none of this side or nothing. You know what I'm saying? This dude born in the UK. Mr. 21 Savage. Chilling in the hood, eating crumpets, drinking tea, and smoking a blunt. I don't know, man. It's, it's just funny to me. It's just funny to me. But the crazy part is, though, they talking about he can get deported because his visa's been up. You know, he's been in the country so long, his visa's been up. And he could get deported. Now, I don't know how none of that even works, you know, to be honest. And I'm thinking probably he can pay his way out of this, you know. Even if they do kick him out, he can always come right back. You know, he can pay his way back in here. But the crazy thing is, are they, you know, are they going to take everything from him? You know, like his homes, you know, everything that he had built over here. You know, are they going to take it from him? Like, how does that work, you know? But it's crazy. Twenty One Savage is from the UK. Who would have knew? Who would have knew? And then they was talking about uh his his pops. His pops is still over there. His pops is a, a famous doctor, a celebrity doctor. They said he was, and he don't. You know, he was talking about how his pops wasn't always around and stuff. His pops is out in the UK. Mom's out in America. You know, took him. You know, mom's always takes the kids. You know, you know how I go. And he grew up out here doing his thing. And I think he said he came out here at 15. So he came out here at 15 doing his thing and stuff, you know. And got into the street life. I'm not sure how, but... I mean, I don't want to say how, but... Because I seen, you know, growing up myself, you know, I got into it too, you know. And it's kind of like more of a adapting, you know. You're trying to survive necessarily, you know. You're trying to get out here and, you know, be a part so you won't be caught lacking or whatever. I don't know. But when I was doing it, you know, it was all about, you know, trying to survive and, and not necessarily fit in, but survive and adapt, you know, just so you can, you know, it's like if you go out of the country and you live in China, you're going to eventually adapt to their ways. You know what I'm saying? You're going to adapt to their ways, you know, doing their customs and what they do. You know, it's kind of the sim same similar thing. You know, he moved out here, moved to a hood, probably because, you know, they didn't have much money and it was a lot cheaper, you know, and they he ended up, you know, getting a part of the life around him and the culture and became who he was. Same thing, you know, kind of like me. But, um... Uh, yeah, man, that's just crazy. I just, I don't know. That's just crazy. But next up, man, let's talk about my boy Bow Wow. Boy Bow Wow went to jail on domestic charges. Him and his girl got into it. Like my man's face is all jacked up. He had scratches on his face. He said she threw a lamp at him. She spit on him. You know, I'm like, dang. And he goes to jail, you know. And... The thing is, everybody's talking about him, calling him, you know, soft, weak, whatever, you know, because of what happened. Now, come on, you know, if the, the tables was turned, it was the other way around, and he beat her up, who, you know, you call him a woman beater, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of jacked up, you know, it's like that, that the, you know, if a woman's hitting on you, what, what are you supposed to do? Call the cops, you call the cops, People are gonna call you soft, they're gonna call you weak, think you're playing. Cops probably won't even take you serious, you know? And, you know, it kind of brings up a, you know, scenario in the past, you know, that I went through personally when I was young, you know? And at the time I actually called the cops, you know? And it backlashed on me and I ended up getting arrested, you know? And I'm the ones called them, you know? And it was kind of jacked up, you know, because I'm the man. You know, and all the woman has to do is just say, you did this, or you did that, 
and that's all they want to hear and you gone you you just they gonna come get you you know i try to call them for help you know and they end up coming and arresting me i'm like what the heck and I was mad. I was like, man, I called y'all for help. Y'all supposed to be helping me. Y'all, you know, y'all arrested me. I don't know. I'm like, man, I can't even trust y'all. I'm not never calling y'all ever again. Never have I called them ever again. I ain't, I ain't called them at all. I don't, I don't need them. Y'all don't help. They don't. They don't help. God forbid you have a warrant and you called in for help. They're going to take you to jail because you got a warrant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you called them. You didn't know. Crazy. But I don't know, man. I don't know their relationship, and I can't really say, you know, what was going on with them. But it's just crazy how the society is. You know, the women, they always seem to win in all aspects, you know, even though the man is considered somewhat superior, you know, because of our, our strength and, you know, other things. But, you know, it's like they got protection. They, they're protected, you know, and get all stuff. Kind of like, uh, I forgot who I was talking to or something like that. We was talking about uh, how the government won't, the government won't give men, you know, assistance and all that stuff. Like they'll, if a man can't afford to take care of his child, you know, like child support or whatever, he can't afford to take his child, he gets arrested. You know what I'm saying? And he, gets, he doesn't get help. But if a woman can't take care of her child, they'll give her assistance. You know, and it's kind of crazy that they do that, if, if you kind of think about it. I don't know, it's just, it's just some crazy stuff, you know, it's kind of how the system is, you know, as far as a man. The man really doesn't have any, no, no pool for real. You know, we have pool in other areas, but we don't have pool in that area when it comes to the child or when it comes to self-defense and all of that. There's so many stories I can just tell y'all, man. I ain't gonna air my business out there like that, but this is, it's just to the point of where they always get the upper hand in that area, you know. But more power to Bow Wow, man. I hope, you know, they get it together and get out, quit all that, you know, fighting and stuff. But next thing, it's about this Super Bowl. Everybody mad. A lot of people didn't even watch the Super Bowl. I kind of didn't watch it. You know, I just got a glimpse of it here and there. You know, when I did see it, it was like the third quarter, and it was three and three. I'm like, oh my god. I was like, who set this up? You know what I'm saying? Who who set this up? It's like the Patriots was playing with them. Like they waited. They're like, let's 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 make this a game. Let's not just you know it's a Super Bowl. Let's get these you know these people paid all this money. We ain't gonna go ahead and hurt and whoop them. They ended up getting way more in the last quarter, and I'm like, <laughs> but y'all had this plan the whole time. And the thing is, like, do these dudes really need another ring? They was calling like people saying he's like the Thanos, the Thanos of the NFL. He got the NFL gauntlet. This dude got all the rings and stuff. Tom Brady out here. Talking about it's the NFL and then it's Tom Brady. This dude, man. I seen this little post on Facebook. It showed uh talking about if he get if he gets seven rings or something like that. And then showed a picture of Jordan coming back and playing, but he's on the uh playing basketball, playing on uh the Nuggets and stuff. It's crazy. The Super Bowl, man, I just kind of seen it coming, you know. But, of course, I always, you know, I try to go for the underdog, even though my team didn't make it. I try to go for the underdog, you know what I'm saying, and hoping they win because it's like, it's kind of like NBA. It'd be the same teams always win. It's like, do we really need to watch this? We already know what team is going to win, you know what I'm saying. They got the teams with all the good players on it on basketball. That's why I don't really watch basketball like that. It's like they got the creative teams, put all the creative players on the team. And you know what I'm saying? Like when you growing up, you used to play season mode with your cousin or whatever. Y'all put all the good players on y'all team and stuff just so y'all can get through their beast mode and everything. It's crazy, man. But hey, congratulations to the Patriots, man. I ain't gonna be no hater about it. But. Next year, somebody got to knock them out. Somebody got to get them off the sticks. <laughs> so, 
Somebody need to get them off the sticks, man. These these dudes right here just keep getting these dubs. Somebody get them off the sticks. It's crazy. But next thing, man. Takashi Snitch Nine. Mr. Takashi to Takashi Six Nine, man. This dude, I mean, I didn't even talk about him on none of the podcasts. Cause I'm like, oh, this dude, like basically, he was a pro proclaimed blood, you know, rolling with some real bloods. And they got hit with some FBI stuff. The bloods were doing some, you know, the real bloods was doing stuff like racketeering and, you know, just going around, you know, being the gang and, you know, they don't go for the gang stuff. And he got hit right along with him because he was hanging with him and saying he was with him. And the first thing was, was kind of crazy is he was saying he was, as soon as he got a, uh, arrested, he was saying he wasn't with him. You know? And it was like, nah, we're not believing that. We got proof you with him. This dude is facing life. And then on top of life, he's facing like a mandatory 45 or something like that. You know? I'm like, this dude got so many charges. And I heard he pled to like nine charges, like they gave him a plea deal. If you snitch and plead to nine charges or something, we'll take off some time. So he started, you know, pretty much just telling about what he did with his crew. Like, yeah, we we paid some people to go and, you know, shoot at so-and-so. And we I sold, I heard he talking about he sold a kilo of some heroin. I'm like, why would you, why would you tell these people this? And like, you know, I'm like, I don't trust him. You know, you telling them, you telling them stuff like heroin. I don't think that was even on there. They're like you giving them extra stuff. You telling them extra stuff. I'm like, this dude, this dude was really out here rolling with the bloods, doing stuff. I'm like I'm pretty sure I think it was like some peer pressure stuff. Like, like oh, you want to be a blood? Well, you got to do what we do, blood. You know what I'm saying? And like, come roll with us. You know, and they making them do stuff. You know, to be a part to make you know get them in, jump, jump them in there, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Just jump him in there pretty much. But it's crazy. This dude started telling now, you know what I'm saying? And he was supposed to be hard and, you know what I'm saying? Nobody can touch me, da da da. But when it comes to that fed time, boy, when they start talking, well, you ain't trying to do no time. Shoot. Like they say, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. That's why I was like, boy, that's why I hung up my coat on that. I'm sure. I got a lot of felonies, man. I got like four felonies myself. Can you believe it? Four. Myself. My last little thing, man, they try to... I was on probation. Already facing seven if I mess up on probation. Facing seven years. Then I got hit with a... Aggravated... Well... Aggravated robbery... And then I got hit with conspiracy of aggravated robbery. So right there, I was like, I was looking at the little grid they had, you know what I'm saying? The sentencing grid, you know, how many years that carry and stuff. I was like, 12 years. I'm like, boy, boy, boy. But God got me out that situation. You know what I'm saying? And once I got out that situation, man, I was like, I'm done, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool, it's too much time, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get out here and get this money the right way, man. You know what I'm saying? Was... But yeah, man. If Takashi get up out of this situation, man, he's going to have to go and hide. Because they're going to be on this top. They're going to be looking for him. I already know it. They're going to be looking for him. It's crazy. I don't know why. You snitch it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the big thing you don't do when you doing that life. You don't tell. You don't talk. Because you can, you know what I'm saying? You got to worry about your your kids, your moms. Because I heard he was uh, paying for protection for his mom. Paying, you know, and now you got to pay protection for his his kids, you know, and his, his uh, BM and stuff. And then he's going to have to have, you know, hide himself. And then, you know, the way jail works, somebody can call into jail like, hey, bro, you know, find out, you know, where so-and-so, you know, Takashi at, you know what I'm saying? And I pay you and, who, you know, whoever you get to knock him off, da-da-da, you know, but they're going to code it on the phone. So, you know, they can't really understand what you're talking about. 
but they can get to him if they really want to get to him. Even the guards. Somebody can know a guard. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, get him. You know what I'm saying? And they can pay the inmates, you know what I'm saying, to do it. Turn turn out, turn their back and let it happen. Y'all done seen a lot of them jail movies, man, where the guard gets paid off and, you know, dudes get off. And the guard act like he didn't see it. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But, um... Yeah, on to the next. This one's kind of random. It's talking about the police, man. <clears throat> it's just some stupid stuff, man. I'm just sitting there thinking. Because I was going through a lot of crap with my car and stuff. My car uh, sitting on the side of the road and stuff. It was acting up or whatever. And I was came back to get it. You know what I'm saying? They towed it away or whatever. But anyway, my thing is this. Y'all ever get pulled over for having a tail light out? And you get a ticket for your tail light. Like I got a ticket one time for my tail light, and I'm like, "Why you just don't tell me this?" And you know what I'm saying, put me in the system or something. As you gave me a warning or give me a warning ticket, you know I'm like, you know, so if I don't get it done in time, then you can charge me for not getting it done. But like most of the time, people don't know they tail light because it's in the back of their car. Most of the time, people don't even check. They just get in and go, you know what I'm saying? If they headlight out, they'll know because they, you know what I'm saying? They're driving forward. But it's just jacked up. Like, they just pull you over and be like, your tail lights out, you know what I'm saying? Here's a ticket, get it fixed. Come to court. So I got to take my time out of my day to come to court for a tail light. Take a picture of my tail light and be like, hey, look, I got it fixed. Or I'll show you a receipt that I bought the bulb. What? And another crazy thing is like, <laughs> They pull you over. You know why I pulled you over? Nigga, if I knew why you pulled me over, I wouldn't have been doing it so you would pull me over. <laughs> like, what kind of question is that? You know what I'm saying? You were doing this speed, you know what I'm saying? You were going 70 and a 60. No, I wasn't. I was going 65. I mean, not 65. I, no, I wasn't going 60. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they're going to swear up and down you wasn't. And how do you fight that? You know what I'm saying? How do you fight that? Like, can I can I show you? You know what I'm saying? I didn't take a picture of my dash when I was, you know. Like, how do you fight a speeding? I don't know. I don't know. The people are like, oh, they got the, they can use their dash. I'm like, man, nine times out of ten, you really want to go to court for a speeding ticket. Speed ticket could be 70 bucks. Then you got to get a lawyer because you, you know what I'm saying, you want to go further with it. And that's going to cost more than that. You know what I'm saying? And then... If you find out it's wrong, they're going to add more charges on there. Plus your lawyer fees. Like, it's not even worth it. You might as well just... It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, man. That stuff is crazy. But, yeah. All right, y'all. Get with y'all next time. Thanks for tuning in on another episode of the podcast. I'm out.